Every time you stop at a gas station, you're using something that took millions of years to form. But do you know the wild journey your fuel has taken to get there? It's way more insane than you think. Over 100 million barrels of oil are used every day worldwide. This huge amount of energy powers about 1.4 billion vehicles. It also supports more than 100,000 commercial flights and helps produce many items from plastics to medicines. Stay with us until the end of this video and we'll reveal the hidden journey from deep underground deposits to the fuel in your car's tank. History From the towering walls of Babylon, built with bitumen, to Marco Polo's accounts of oil seeps in Baku, crude oil has been a driving force in human history, fueling the growth and innovation of civilizations. However, modern petroleum history began in 1846 when Abraham Gessner created kerosene from bitumen, offering a cleaner fuel for lighting. Not too long after, in 1853, Ignacy Lukaswitz improved refining techniques. Then in 1859, Edwin Drake drilled the first commercial oil well in Pennsylvania. This marked the beginning of large-scale oil extraction and refining, paving the way for today's massive petroleum industries worldwide. These developments have transformed economies and societies worldwide, powering industries, transportation, and countless everyday products. And today, we're going to take an oily look at modern-day refinery where this petroleum is processed. The Formation of Crude Oil – Nature's Time Capsule Before we explore how petroleum is made, we need to talk about crude oil, the black gold that powers our world. Crude oil is a fossil fuel a natural resource formed deep within the Earth over millions of years ago. It originated from the remains of tiny marine organisms like algae and plankton that lived in ancient seas. However, when these organisms died, their organic remains sank to the ocean floor and were gradually buried under layers of mud, sand, and sediment. As more layers accumulated with increasing pressure and heat, these organic remains slowly transformed into what we now call crude oil. But this transformation did not happen everywhere and just randomly, as you may think. It, in fact, occurred only in specific regions where the right geological conditions existed, specifically marine environments with abundant organic matter, followed by perfect conditions to trap and preserve the developing hydrocarbons. This explains why oil deposits are concentrated in certain areas like the Middle East, Russia, and the United States, and parts of Africa and South America. Production Process Extraction Before crude oil can be refined into petroleum products, it must first be located and extracted. Modern exploration combines geological surveys, seismic imaging, and exploratory drilling to locate promising oil reservoirs. These technologies help identify where oil might be trapped in underground formations. Once a potential site is identified, environmental assessments are conducted to understand the impact of drilling activities. Before any extraction can begin, official permits must be obtained, especially in areas with strict environmental regulations. The extraction process begins with the preparation of the drilling site. As you can see, workers start clearing the area using appropriate machinery to facilitate the process and also building access roads to this mapped out site. When all these are in place, they proceed to set up a drilling rig. In recent times, sophisticated rigs have been built to drill both vertically and then horizontally to increase access to these underground oil reserves. As drilling goes deeper, a metal tube called a casing is placed inside this hole to keep it stable and protect underground water, as oil spillage could eventually contaminate underground water if not properly handled. Once the drill reaches the oil layer, production tubing is then immediately installed to pump the oil up and control systems are set up to manage and control this flow. For conventional oil reserves, natural pressure may initially force oil to the surface, but as this pressure depletes, pumps like the iconic nodding donkey pump jacks are installed to maintain production. For offshore operations like those in the Mediterranean, specialized platforms or floating vessels are used to house both the drilling and production equipment. But there's one crucial aspect of drilling that often gets overlooked, the aftermath. Are these sites simply abandoned or are they sealed off from public access? What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments before we move on to reveal this interesting detail. Well, after extraction, wells aren't simply abandoned. Instead, responsible operators implement redemption plans to restore the land. 
This includes removing equipment, fixing any pollution issues, and planting vegetation. In places like France and the EU, strict rules are set in place to ensure this land restoration is done responsibly to minimize environmental impact. Next step is transportation. Crude oil transportation is a well-organized process that ensures oil moves smoothly from extraction points to refineries and ultimately to your use. This process progressively unfolds through various modes of transport, each optimized for specific stages. In the first phase of this process, crude oil is transported primarily by sea at major ports by heavy-duty oil tankers. Once the ships dock, the oil is pumped into storage tanks near the ports. From these storage tanks, pipelines take over as the main way to transport this oil inland. A good example of this is the Southern European Pipeline, which moves oil from Marseille to refineries in Faisen and even Switzerland. Similarly, the Ile de France Pipeline that supplies crude oil to the Grand Pew, its refinery near Paris. But in places where pipelines are not available, railroads and trucks step in and are used for shorter distance transport of crude oil and its byproducts. This is not the case for all refineries, as they are strategically located near ports or major economic areas to minimize high transportation costs while ensuring proximity to storage tanks. Refining Once the crude oil arrives at the refinery, the control department conducts thorough tests to assess its properties, as different types of crude oil require slightly different refining processes. The oil is then stored in large tanks, ready to be processed. The first and most crucial step in refining is distillation, which leverages the fact that the various components of crude oil have different boiling points. With this, the crude oil is heated in a furnace until it turns into vapor and sent into this tall structure known as a distillation tower. As this vapor rises, it cools down, and different parts of the oil condense at various levels. The highest levels have the lowest temperatures, specifically below 150 degrees Celsius. And here, light gases and gasoline condense. The middle regions have mid-temperatures between 150 degrees Celsius and 370 degrees Celsius. Here, kerosene and diesel condense. Then, at the lowest regions, with the highest temperatures above 370 degrees Celsius, heavier oils and residual materials remain. This initial separation produces what we call straight-run products, but they aren't yet suitable for commercial use. They require further processing to meet the standards of modern engines. Now, this is where the breakdown process gets more interesting. After extracting these hydrocarbons, they undergo further breakdown, which involves changing their molecular structure to create more useful products. This is done through several key processes, and one of these processes is called catalytic cracking, which uses heat, pressure, and special helpers called catalysts to break down these large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller ones that are perfect for making gasoline. If you're enjoying this journey, don't forget to like and subscribe for more behind-the-scenes insights. Another key process is reforming, where molecules are rearranged to make components with a higher octane rating. This helps create gasoline that burns more efficiently and smoothly in engines. Then, there's hydroprocessing, which removes impurities like sulfur from the fuel. This process uses hydrogen and special catalysts to clean the fuel. Throughout these processes, operators in the control room keep a close eye on vital components like temperature, pressure, and how fast the materials are flowing. They use advanced computer systems to monitor the entire process and also regularly take samples to the control department for proper tests to make sure the products meet the required standards. Maintenance teams on the ground also check the working equipment regularly to prevent sudden breakdowns and also ensure everything runs safely. Mixing The final step in this refining process involves mixing different components together to create finished products with specific characteristics. For gasoline, this includes adding special additives that improve both quality and efficiency regardless of climate or weather changes. Up next, packaging and distribution. After refining, petroleum products are stored in large tanks to ensure they meet quality standards and regulations. Specialized tanker trucks, equipped with separate compartments, are then loaded using automated systems that precisely measure the fuel and prevent spills. These trucks transport the fuel to gas stations across various locations. At the stations, the fuel is stored in underground tanks with advanced systems designed to prevent leaks and monitor stock levels. Whenever you get to the pump to fill your car, the fuel travels up from these tanks, 
passing through a filtration system that ensures it's clean and free of impurities. With a smooth whoosh, the fuel is pumped into your car, ready to power your next adventure. From the ancient natural processes that formed crude oil to the advanced refineries that transform it into fuel, petroleum production is one of humanity's most complex industrial achievements. As the world gradually shifts toward more sustainable energy sources, understanding the complexity of our current fuel system helps us appreciate both the engineering marvel it represents and the importance of developing alternatives. The next time you stop at a service station, take a moment to appreciate the extraordinary journey that fuel has taken from deep beneath the earth to the pump at your fingertips. If you found this journey fascinating, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Stay tuned for more behind-the-scenes insights.